It's time once again for the SMC Journal podcast. This is the show that's all about performance engineering, testing, tuning, uh, optimization, observability, and everything in between with regards to IT Today. I'm Scott Moore, your host, and today we're going to be discussing the latest version of LoadRunner, version 2022, release 2. It's got some significant changes and additions into it that I, I want to mention. And did you know that in release 1, there was a Prometheus monitor added to LoadRunner? I'm finding this out myself, and I'm like, we got to check this out, right? Uh, so that's what we'll be talking about today. Uh, and before we do that, let's talk about the sponsors that make this podcast happen for you. This episode is sponsored by Microfocus and the LoadRunner Solutions family. That includes LoadRunner Professional, Enterprise, Cloud, and Developer. You know, performance matters. Did you know that LoadRunner Solutions have the largest community of practitioners in the world? Join that community at community.microfocus.com, scan the QR code, and check out the LoadRunner family page on performance engineering, as well as their YouTube playlist that we've got links for in the show notes on smcjournal.com, as well as YouTube. This podcast is sponsored by Oracy Software. For over 20 years, Oracy, a DevSecOps innovator, has helped companies innovate, accelerate, and automate the entire software development lifecycle. Oracy AppSec and Oracy Cloud Solutions and Services offer full lifecycle support and integration to ensure scalability of transformative applications. Also, they're the makers of Oracy Labs, the train anyone, anywhere, anytime, AWS cloud-native virtual e-learning platform. Oracy works with hundreds of global brands as customers and partners, including Fortune 500 companies across a variety of industries. Find out more at oracy.com. This episode is sponsored by StormForge. The StormForge platform focuses on AI-powered software designed to help DevOps teams release with confidence and help your IT leaders realize the promise of cloud native. That means faster innovation, higher quality, resiliency, scalability, and efficiency. Find out more at stormforge.io. So I started looking at the latest release notes for LoadRunner 2022 release two, and I noticed there's a new protocol, there's new monitors and integrations, there's enhancements, and there's things that uh, a lot of people would just skip over in a uh, what they consider a smaller release. But actually, this one is fairly significant. So once again, I've asked David McLeish of the LoadRunner product marketing team to be on and talk about this uh, uh, this new release, what's all in it. And also I wanted to get a, a demo of this Prometheus monitor that we missed in the last release. Let's find out in that interview now. Hey, David, welcome back to the SMC Journal podcast today. Hey, Scott, it's good to be back. It's good to see you, my friend. So we've got a new release of LoadRunner out, and I've been wanting to talk to you about that. It's actually maybe a couple of weeks old now. Uh, LoadRunner 2022 release two, and it's got some cool features in it. Um, and I want I wanted you to come and talk about that. I've I've actually got the uh, knowledge base article with the readme notes mm -hmm. for this okay, version, yep. and I'm going to bring it up on the screen, and I want you to kind of talk to it if you would. Yeah, that's fine. So what what are the the things on this list here? We've got new protocols, we've got new monitors, we've got other features here. What are some of the big deals and highlights that we need to talk about with this release? Okay, hey, uh, so I mean, as you've probably seen, uh, we released that I think just the last week of October, uh, and even though it's a revision two release, I mean, there's tons of of features and innovation, and that's what that's the message that we're wanting to tell our customers, Luke. We want your version current. We want you using the latest version. We're listening to our customers. The idea exchange is active. We're we're updating that in terms of uh, we're listening to the customer enhancement requests. We're allowing them to be publicly voted on. That allows it to be seeded and ranked. Uh, and then obviously we will continue that right the way through next year. So we will do the normal release cadence where we'll do a major uh, and then we'll do an R1 and an R2. Uh, and we continue the same way. We have our shared technology that surfaces and services the whole family. So that'll be ViewGen, uh, the 1LG, <clears throat> our protocol stack, 
Uh, and those are the things that we'll always continue to enhance because it gives value right across professional enterprise uh, and Loadrunner Cloud. Uh, so again, I'd really like to emphasize uh, on the protocols. It's one of those things that uh, it's almost taken for granted now that Loadrunner has the largest protocol stack or technology stack. Uh, and the last release, we, we added a new protocol, uh, which is the .NET Plus. And again, <clears throat> tons of requests for for this. Uh, we had lots of customers asking about this because Microsoft made a change. So our traditional .NET protocol uh, couldn't hook into that. Uh, so we had to create a new protocol a stack called .NET Plus, and that encompasses uh, the .NET uh, 5 and 6. <clears throat> and also we've built it in a way that any additional updates uh, from Microsoft on that we'll be able to consume that. So this is the first version we've had that out. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll continue to expand on that for each uh, of the releases next year. Uh, and I mean, the protocol stack, it's one of those things that it is a real differentiator to our business. Uh, there is other vendors out there uh, and everyone's uh, open to their own choice, whatever works best for those. But we usually resonate because we have such a wide ranging uh, protocol uh, stack support. Uh, and it's one of those things that going into FY23 and all of next year and even further afield, we have lots of plans uh, on our protocol support that we're going to be beefing up what we have. Any new ones will get incremental updates uh, that, that will come in from the field, that will come in from our customers. If something's missing, we'll put it in. Uh, and then we'll just continue to add new things as protocols evolve or anything else new comes out to the market. Awesome. Uh, yeah, the .NET Plus, I noticed that's a that's a big deal. Uh, let's talk about this new monitor. It looks like you've got a Datadog monitor uh, integration here. What's that about? Yeah, so again, uh, came from the field and our, our customer community asking us, look, you need to put a new monitor in for Datadog. Uh, <clears throat> And again, this is one of our investment buckets uh, that we've had for the last number of years. The way the market is going, testing is a team sport. It's just not done by a single department anymore. There's uh, site reliability engineers, there's observability engineers, uh, and we need to make sure that we're giving people a complete end-to-end -end platform. Uh, so what we're doing now is we've hooked into Datadog, and anything that's available on your Datadog platform, uh, you can create a new monitor graph uh, and kick that off as well with a performance test. So you not only get to see it uh, on the online controller charts, uh, you can see it in your Datadog console, but then more importantly, uh, you get it in the load runner analysis. And that's where really people will then be seeing the value of this because they will be able to, to go in and slice and dice the data make informed decisions, use that to their stakeholders. Uh, so you will see that recently we did Prometheus, before that we did uh, Azure, uh, and we have plans going into next year to take on more observability platforms. And it's one of those ones, I always put the call to action out to customers, come and tell me what you need, uh, come to our data exchange, uh, uh, log a request, uh, an enhancement request. It'll be out there live on the community, other people will vote for it if it's something they need. Uh, and usually that's what we're doing. We're looking at these every two weeks and we're looking, does it make uh, sense to take that on? Will it benefit more than one customer? Is it larger for the rest of our community? And then what we'll do is we'll put in a backlog and add a release for that uh, in the future. So uh, APM is really big for us. Uh, it's something you're going to see us continually invest in. So what, I don't want to skip over this either. You've got this dynamically building monitors in advance and monitoring new mm -hmm. metrics as they become available, which is that's more important, I think, than ever as you've got auto scaling, whether that's mm -hmm. uh, VMs or whatever. Is that, that what that's built for is you don't know what you're going to have when you ramp up. You're going to have more infrastructure than you'll have less infrastructure. Uh, and this actually uh, keeps up with that, right? It is, yeah. And I mean, that's one of the things, the Azure Insights, they have that built in. And that's one of the reasons we noticed that. But also we had uh, requests from customers saying, look, 
if I'm running a soak test for eight hours and it's overnight, I can't think of everything ahead of the game. Uh, so what we do is we use reg- regular expressions to look for certain patterns and conditions. So you think if you were creating a test in our controller, building a scenario, and you went in and you, and you were wanting to add uh, some uh, host monitoring, uh, but you maybe thought that maybe just capturing one browser window would be enough. Uh, but what happened if during that test, multiple browser windows opened or other metrics were collected that you hadn't thought of? By putting a regular expression and putting almost like a wildcard string in there, anything that meets that condition, we will dynamically add that to your monitor uh, so that you'll see it real time. But more importantly, that's captured. And then you can use that to make informed decisions post-test execution. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and here's another one that we don't want to gloss over here in the mm. platform and infrastructure. Dynamic virtual user mm. load balancing and load generators ensure greater confidence in the scalability of the gen- Talk about that because that's also very important. Yeah, it is. Uh, and this is really to build user confidence uh, because we've all seen it. You're running a large test and one of your load generators goes down because it's been under stress or you haven't pre-provisioned enough infrastructure to support that capacity. Uh, and we've always had Load Runner sort of being able to deal with that, but we round robin the, the load, but that's not true load balancing. So what we're doing here is we're building on something actually that we released a few versions ago. So if you remember, we, we put in a new measurement where we could uh, monitor the health of your controller and also your load generator. Mm-hmm. So what we've did is we've built on that technology and we've built an algorithm that during the test execution, we're monitoring your load generators and we're looking at the final statistics of that. So if we break any of those boundaries, say for example, uh, memory goes higher than 70% or sorry, CPU goes higher than 70%, that machine to us is breaking a boundary, almost a service level agreement type uh, thinking on that. So what we do is the next users that are queued up for execution, we tell them, look, you can't use that load generator. That's in difficulty. So we swap those over to the next load generator in the pool. So what that does is that gives you confidence that uh, your test will always complete and it'll complete because we balance those users over to uh, a load generator that's healthy. And even we've even thought further than this, that what happens if all load generators are actually under stress. So what we do is we put the users into an idle mode and they just wait and continuously go and look and sync and have a look at, is this guy available? Is he healthy? Has he come out of that stressful period? And if so, we just resume the test again and we just keep the monitor cycle running under the hood. Wow, that's that's very cool. Um, kind of protecting the the testing person that's that's, that's running the test. Hey, it, watch it, out! It is, it is because we see it quite a, quite a lot. And coming from a support background myself and working in tech support all those years ago, it's one of those things that I always seen, and we've always seen the frustration when something like that happened. We'd always ask customers, "How can you merge results?" And then that becomes a bigger problem because. Uh, maybe some of those results were running for hours or over the weekend. Uh, and that's a big slice of your data that you may, may be missing. And we know data is key for making the right decisions. So by doing this, we take away a lot of that frustration. We give you confidence that the product will work whenever you set that up and let that run because we have the mechanisms and or the safety nets and the failover for that, for that matter. Uh, and I think it's a great feature. And it's one of those ones that we will probably build on right throughout the family and maybe tweak it as we go along and, and add additional features on. Awesome. Uh, anything else you want to talk about specifically in this release that you think is significant or something you want to uh, highlight? Uh, probably there's other things there, like for example, IPv6 support. Uh, that's another one that really is a big growing mandate for this to, uh, to have IPv6 support, uh, because we know that IPv4 exhaustion is coming soon. Uh, we know there's lots of benefits from having an IPv6 environment. There's better security, there's better communications, uh, better uptime, uh, and we really needed this also for our federal market because a lot of the National Institute of Standards and Testings in the U.S. are calling that most of their uh, community needs to adhere to that to that uh, standard. 
So we've had to put that in to service that, but also to future-proof our customers' environments because they know that if they start building this now, that's for the future. They're leaving some of their legacy behind. So putting that in uh, was quite a big thing. And even though you won't really see anything as a user, it's all the communication channels under the hood. And also we can then communicate over our AMI, li AMI listeners. So if your load generators are behind a firewall, we can still communicate uh, to those LGs that are on IPv6. And uh, it's a big one. And there was a fair amount of effort and set up and test. Uh, even though you as a user don't really see anything, but I'm sure the administrators at your company, uh, the security people at your company, infrastructure people, they're all pretty happy that, that we now have that support in place. Cool, cool. So I, I, I want to also highlight um, there was some, some, some significant um, additions in the last release as well. One specific one that I was interested in, and we just didn't have a chance to get you on the show for it till now is the Prometheus monitor that's yeah. built into Load Runner. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, same sort of story. This is really resonating in the user community. Uh, we've seen a pretty fast adoption from that. Uh, We've seen people voting for that on our uh, on our idea exchange. We've seen our pre-sales people to out talking to customers in the field. They've seen people with that already out there and being used pretty extensively. Uh, and we're also seeing it from a lot of other channels. So all of this sort of snowballed into saying, we need to put this to the top of our priorities because there, there was lots of other vendors that we still have for uh, consideration. Uh, but we needed to support that. And, and it's the same sort of thing that uh, if somebody is using that and they need to take the measurements or need to, to couple that uh, observability with their performance testing, uh, then we needed to make sure that we had a monitor that can support that. So same similar, similar type to Datadog and to Azure, during your scheduling uh, or the creation of your scenario, uh, we have a new option there to go in and hook into a Prometheus platform. Uh, and then really anything that's available on that platform, we can collect that. Uh, you'll see it real time again. You'll see it on the Prometheus platform. Uh, and then more importantly, you have it in Load Runner Analysis and you'll do your uh, your setup on that. And I'm pretty happy to share a little demo on that and we can we can talk and, and watch through that. Yeah, let's, let's go to that demo. I, I've been wanting to see this for a while. Let's go to that now. Uh, so this is standard controller. I have a s real simple test, just one script here, uh, 10 users to run for two minutes, uh, and then we'll ramp them off. But the interesting part is when I come into uh, the run tab, you see we have a new Prometheus graph here that was added uh, in the release before last. Uh, the last release we added Datadog. We can, we can do another video showing that. But uh, if we come into the controller charts, we have an option to add measurements. And if we look here, this is just my machine running in one of our labs. And to connect, it's pretty simple. It's the host URL and the default port, which is 9090. Uh, we are going to have another option uh, to allow you to uh, connect to secure Prometheus. So uh, you will see another toggle option here to turn on and turn off HTTPS. Uh, but if we look at just adding measurements, um, if we take one of these, these are all of the measurements that are available. Uh, for us to consume from Prometheus. Uh, there's a limit here on adding 50 just because of the uh, real estate needed to display all of those during runtime and then the amount of actual uh, results we would need to collect and collate and display in, in load runner analysis. But if we look at something really simple uh, and we'll just look at the, uh, the GC duration seconds, if I was to add this as it is, uh, what we'll see is we'll just pick up the first measurement that matches that. Uh, but to allow us to get more granular detail, uh, we have a custom option. And the custom option allows us uh, to support prompt SQL. And we do that through the regular expression. So if I go back to my, uh, just before I select any measurements for this run, if I go back to my Prometheus server, you can see here, this is what I'm going to measure. And you can see there's different uh, quantiles that we are able to uh, collect and filter on. Uh, so if I was just to add the base, which is this guy here, uh, it'll, just pick, it'll just pick up the first in this. But if I wanted to actually filter that down a little bit, say maybe only collect this guy, 
uh, we can use Prompt SQL uh, in our custom uh, option on the controller to actually pick up some of the values on that. So by doing that, if I come back in, I can click on custom, uh, and then we just basically need to pass in what we want to filter on. And this is our regular expression here. Uh, and if we OK that, it gets added to the chart. Uh, I'll maybe add some other things as well, just so that it looks like uh, we're collecting more data uh, during this run. So let me just select another. Uh, add all those to the chart uh, and OK that. And if we start that scenario. And while that's running, I just want to jump back into Prometheus and just show if I was to then, you can build up this using uh, the Prometheus and you can come in, turn on uh, autocomplete and then you can then start, for example, typing in what you want to build up in your in your command. Uh, for this one, we'll just show you, I'll just do a paste job and we'll execute that and you see that it, it then just goes and runs that prompt SQL and filters that down just to that measurement there. Uh, and if I just come back uh, and execute that. And anybody that's not familiar with Prometheus, they have the Metrics Explorer here, which basically gives you an option about everything that you can uh, go and measure and collect the metrics on. Uh, so if I just come back in to my uh, controller, you will see these are the standard charts that are running uh, and we're just collecting data points as we go along. Uh, and here's our, our low test uh, graph that we are getting from, from the Prometheus uh, measurements. If we let that just run through to completion, uh, and then what we'll show is we'll actually show that we have captured those uh, real time, as in they're displaying in the chart here. Uh, but also more importantly, and where we see the value in LoadRunner, is that these measurements will be then available as part of your overall results file. And then you will then open that in uh, LoadRunner analysis. And that's where you then start doing your slicing and dicing and, and start making uh, informed decisions based on what the, that uh, that data is actually showing you. Uh, now, right here, and like most of our charts at the moment, uh, we are simply just consuming the data uh, from those other APM vendors. Uh, but we realize that there is a shift in the market and maybe people are wanting to stay in their tool of choice. So uh, set reliability engineers are wanting to stay in their platforms. Uh, low test engineers uh, are wanting to stay within their platform. So we understand that maybe just having uh, a chart or a graph that consumes but doesn't write uh, may not always work. So we're looking to think around bi-directional and, and writing data back to other platforms. Uh, I know that there is some uh, vendors that are, are considering that. So it is one that, that we're having to think about as well. And we would like customers to let us know uh, what they think. Uh, let's use these uh, APM uh, support that we already have in place. Let us know what you think of them. If there's anything we need to refine or change or add on, uh, we're always happy to, to have that real and honest feedback uh, from our user community. So now that the test is run and completed, uh, I've just opened up the results within LoadRunner Analysis. Uh, and this is where we, we actually get the most benefit. So uh, the default is just a normal uh, summary report that we add. Uh, but uh, the real... Uh, strength in load runner analysis is that you can add all of the data points that you have collected. So if we just come in here, we can add a new Prometheus graph that just went in and selected those measurements that we added during the test run. And if we just open that, uh, we see these are all the data points that we collected. Uh, and usually in isolation without any context, these aren't really giving you any, any real uh, good data points that you can actually make informed decisions on. Uh, the real feature and the strength of LoadRunner is the fact that you can come in and merge other graphs in here and make sense of the data. Uh, so if we just overlay this with running users, then we see uh, you have uh, the user count added here, and then you can start coming in and adding different charts and making more informed decisions. And then obviously, you don't want this data to live 
just in your uh, controller or, or within your department. So then you would go in and just go ahead and generate the HTML report from that, uh, which just create that, wrap it up, and now you have a HTML report, uh, which then has your measurements that you've collected and also any overlays and charts. And then this is what you can then use for your stakeholders. You can use it your stand up meetings, and that then gives uh, some additional value to uh, to your measurements. Uh, and like all of our graphs and all of the new APM vendors that we support, again uh, we start out uh, in Loadrunner Professional. It's where the integrations team are. We can build them and release them to market quicker, and then we then will consume those right away right the way through the rest of our family. So into enterprise and then into load on our cloud. Uh, so again, real call to action. Uh, let us know if you're using Prometheus, uh, please use the integration. Let us know what you like. Uh, be honest, let us know what you don't like. Let us know what you want us to to, uh, to fix or to add going forward. Uh, and observability, uh, it's a big uh, item for us right away through 2023. We do have investment time for all of our releases. Uh, we're going to bring three releases to market uh, in 2023. Uh, so really, it'd be nice to get some some feedback and to, and to hear uh, where you want us to go next. Uh, so let us know your thoughts and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Thank you for providing that demo. That's great to see. Um, I don't want to forget about this other bullet point that I'm seeing in this document here. It says, your users can monitor the performance of their chaos test in real time and use collected measurements and load runner analysis for a richer user experience. And I know when we had you on last time, we were talking about the Gremlin integration because you've been working with them. Is this sort of an enhancement of that? Are you taking it further? It is. So uh, we released the Gremlin integration incrementally. Uh, we did a proof of concept. Then we sort of released a tech preview. Uh, and then we released a full GA that says, okay, anything that happens in that, we will support you. We want to hear from customers about where we go next. But what we did is we enhanced the user experience to this. Uh, so on our new designer uh, in the controller, there's a new, well, there's an option there that's always been there. And we steered away from actually using the word chaos. Uh, we call it disruption events. And that goes and connects to the Gremlin web server. Uh, but during the design of this, there was a few things that we hadn't put in the last release. Uh, we hadn't put the overlays uh, in times of when a chaos event starts and stops. We hadn't put a check in to say, look, maybe that chaos event is longer than the actual runtime of the scenario. So lots of little things like that, just little checks under the covers, but also making it much more visually pretty. We've added a new chart for chaos itself so that you can see those real time. Uh, and it's really one of those ones where we're wanting our customers who are actually using the Gremlin service to come and tell us where we go next because we're really only doing triggering the execution and bringing back minimal data just to say that run, this is the name of the event. It started here, it stopped then. And then you sort of do the overlay with the normal traditional uh, load runner results that you capture. But I know from looking at Gremlin and, and talking to those guys, they've brought out all new types of observability metrics. They've released their golden signals um, feature. And we really want customers to tell us where they go next because a lot of customers, when they're running those, they're probably in putting observability notes. They're putting in whether that passes or fails. Uh, and we want to know, do we need to do something on that? Because if it fails there, should we have an SLA that says if it's a failure there, then you fail your performance test as well? So really call the action to, to our customers, to our shared customers. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, tell us what we need to do in, in, in future versions. Uh, it, it gets a little complicated in my mind in a, in a way when you think about the load generation is then creating a chaos event that then – Mm -hmm. has to look at some observability metric that then ties back into the load test that's, that kind of levels everything and says, mm -hmm. wait just a second, based on what I'm seeing. That that yeah. seems uh, <laughs> seems a little hard to pull off. but it, it does, but I think anything that's really available on the Gremlin API, 
and it's stored there, we can we can retrieve that on the public API. So if it is people something that people want to see because they make an informed decision of it and they'd like to make it in context of their performance test, uh, let us know. Because if you also noticed that just after we released the uh, professional in the enterprise, we also released Load Runner Cloud, the latest version of that a few days later. And they actually now support running uh, Gremlin tests from Load Runner Cloud. Uh, so again, it's one of those things, it's evolving right the way through our product set uh, and the entire family. And if there is something there, then we want to build that in and, and, and give value to customers that's using that feature. I love the fact that you continue to say, and you've said in previous um, shows, we want to hear your feedback. Customers, tell us what you need so that we can provide it for you. We can't, we don't know that you need it until you tell us you need it. Um, so I, I love that. Uh, listening to customers is important. Um, I want to switch gears just a little bit because I'm fresh back from KubeCon 2022 where I was doing several interviews. I was I was learning a lot myself on how Kubernetes is being um, mm -hmm. matured faster and uh, not just deployed faster, but accepted <clears throat> faster than almost any stack that I've seen. And it is on its way to becoming the de facto OS for the cloud and from a performance engineering standpoint, the world is sort of shifting around me uh, and others mm -hmm. like me, which, and I'm happy. I'm happy to see what's, what's happening. I think it's great. Um, but it brings me to like just seeing this Prometheus demo, Prometheus being one of those CNCF projects, the Cloud Native yeah. Computing Foundation. There's other out that you mentioned observability. So yeah. as I'm looking at this, a lot of the vendors that were there at KubeCon take from the CNCF and then they'll pro probably you know end up adding an additional layer to provide a more complete solution, at, you know, using some of that open source yeah. to, to combine with that. Where does that leave a product like LoadRunner that's been around and matured for yeah. so long, how are we going to see an adaptation to this new world of Kubernetes deployed apps, CNCF, uh, and all of this? Yeah. How does it play? Yeah, and, and that's a very good question. I mean, if you cast your, your mind back, I mean, LoadRunner is probably 25 years old or so. Uh, and along the way, we've been continuously building and evolving. Uh, and in fact, the last release of LoadRunner Enterprise, uh, there was extensive uh, UI and under the hood modernization. And it's to allow us to make sure that all of this stuff that's happening, uh, that we will be able to support that, that we'll be able to go full content containerization. We'll be able to move away from some dependencies that we maybe have on some Windows uh, components. Uh, and we really see, I mean, if we look at the last release, LRE 2022 R2, I mean, they put a lot of work into their configuration uh, around orchestration uh, and their host images to allow better dynamic provisioning. Uh, they were modernizing all of our runtime settings so that whenever we do need to uh, orchestrate something or put it onto a container, then it is all uniform and there is no things that won't work across the family. So we do see this shift and a lot of the work that's going in at the moment, whilst it's not surfaced in the product because there isn't a feature yet for it, under the hood, everything is changing because we see that this is the shift in the market. People want us to, to have a fully uh, future-proof product that can go and be deployed that way. And it's not like the, the products of the past where maybe some things were seen as monolithic. Now we want to make those smaller. We're building things as microservices so they can be consumed across the entire suite. Uh, we build it once and we use it right across the, the family. And that's the sort of thing that you will see and hear from us definitely in the next year. We have some things planned there. Uh, we're also looking at other things about supporting all the other things in there like OpenShift and things like that that we know people are using and customers are actually telling us about and we are actively working on things like that. So you will definitely see a lot of our our products, uh, features and the way we're, we're rolling those out. They will be shifting towards supporting a type of deployment model like that. Awesome. That's very good to hear. Uh, thanks again for being on today's show. Can't wait to get this out there uh, so people can see. I'm very excited about the Prometheus monitor. And so, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to start messing with that myself. <laughs> so so thanks again. And is there anything else that we need to discuss before, before we end the show? 
Uh, no, just really the call to action. If customers want to, to reach out to me or via you, come to our idea exchange, have a look what other customers are uh, putting down as a requirement. Feel free to vote, feel free to contact us. We really want to hear from our community. That's what we're building the features for. We're not building it for ourselves. We're not building it based on a report to come out. Uh, we want our customers to tell us what, what we want to build and where we go next. And any of the new features that we release, please please use them. Use them in anger. Let us know if there's a gap. Uh, let us know if there's something that you want us to add upon that. And uh, we're more than happy to get that planned in. And That's awesome. Deliver that out. And we'll make sure that we put links in the show notes as well for like the idea yeah. exchange or any, anything else that you want to share. Thanks again, David. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Welcome. Thanks, Scott. Okay. So what do you think? Uh, I actually think it's very refreshing to hear that, that MicroFocus and the LoadRunner team are so um, they're so interested in hearing feedback from customers. They want to provide a better product. They want to provide a product with the features that customers want today, not 10 years ago. They're trying to move this product forward and keep it current, but they need to hear back from uh, their customers. I know how they feel. I'd like to have your feedback on this show and what you think about the content. And, you know, I ask for that in every single show, but you can probably count on one or two hands how many times I've actually gotten really good feedback uh, directly. So this is where you come in and you can make things better. Just contact me. You know, you can reach me at my site at scottmore.consulting. I've got a LinkedIn profile there, a Twitter profile. You can also email me at help at scottmore.consulting and just tell me what you think about this content. You know, if you really like this content, you could subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll know about all the new videos that come out as they come out with not only this podcast, but my other show, the performance tour. So we want to keep providing you with good content, just like the team at LoadRunner wants to provide more features and additional things that you would use when you do load testing. Uh, so do that. Contact us today. For this episode of the SMC Journal, this is Scott Moore saying thank you for watching and bye-bye.